Hello and welcome to Lipid Injectable Emulsion Survey with Gap Analysis, Part 2, ILE Infusion Practices. My name is Phil Ayers. I'm Chief of Clinical Pharmacy Services for Baptist Health Systems in Jackson, Mississippi, and the current Chair for the American Society for Parental Enteral Nutrition, Parental Nutrition Safety Committee. Thank you for joining us. I will be presenting Part 2 of a four-part program addressing lipid injectable emulsions. I would like to call your attention to the use of ILE in this slide. This is a new designation by Aspen and replacing IVFE or intravenous fat emulsions. The use of IVFE has been noted to cause a potential error of confusion in terms of IVFE can be confused for intravenous iron. So Aspen has now changed that IVFE to ILE. So I'll be using ILE throughout the presentation and any future publications from Aspen, you will see the use of ILE or injectable lipid emulsions. There have been new recommendations and guidelines for ordering, preparing and filtering ILEs. The PN Safety Committee thought it would be a good time to develop a survey to see how clinicians and their facilities are using ILEs in terms of prescribing, preparing, and administering to the patients across the spectrum of care from neonates to the adult population. The Lipid Injectable Emulsion Survey with Gap Analysis was published in Nutrition and Clinical Practice, or NCP, in October 2017. The lead was Mike Christensen from the University of Tennessee. The survey was developed by the PN Safety Committee and the content was validated by the by content experts and the Aspen Clinical Practice Committee. The survey consisted of 70 questions divided into four domains. Number one, sample characteristics. Number two, adult population. Number three, pediatric population. And number four, neonatal or infant population. There were 670 respondents to the survey. They were primarily dietitians and pharmacists. Looking at table one, or the type of parental nutrition formulation by age related, you can see that it's divided into the adult patient, pediatric patient, and the infant patient. And you can receive the clinician's respondents to the type of parental nutrition formulation used in their facility. Looking at the adult population, you can see 42% compounded dextrose amino acid solutions, or better known as two in one, as their parental nutrition. 42% used a compounded total nutrient admixture, meaning they added the ILE to the dextrose amino acid, better known as a three in one, and that was 42% of those that responded to the adult patient. 12% responded that they used a commercial multi-chamber bag with I, without ILE in the bag. Looking at the pediatric population, you can see that the majority of those responded that they used a compounded dextrose amino acid solution, 71%, 26% using a 3-in-1. With very little use of commercial multi-chamber bags. In the infant population, you can see a, a large percentage, 90%, used a compounded dextrose amino acid solution or a two-in-one in that population. Looking at how, how ILEs were administered, again, looking at adult, pediatric, and infant patients, and did those patients receive a three-in-one or a TNA, or did they receive a separate ILE infusion, or did were they using a combination of a TNA and a separate ILE infusion? So respondents here that were seeing adult patients, 38% responded that they used a TNA as how they were administering the ILEs. 43% were administering as a separate infusion in terms of the ILEs. And 19% were using both a TNA and a separate ILE infusion. When we looked at the pediatric population, 57% of the respondents said they used a separate ILE infusion with 25% responding that they used both a TNA and a separate ILE. In terms of the infant population, um, almost 90% of those responded that they do a separate ILE infusion in that population. 
I'm going to ask about the frequency of ILE and did they give the ILE seven days a week. In the adult population, 65% responded that they did uh, administer the ILE seven days a week. In the pediatric population, over 80% responded that they administered the ILE seven days a week. And over 90% of the infant uh, clinicians responded that they uh, administer ILE seven days a week. In terms of dosing practices for the adult, 24% of those responded that they used the container size. In other words, they, if the container was a 250 mil size, that's what they um, administered to the patient. 32% of those said they administered the ILE as a percent of energy, and the average dose here was at 26% of the energy. The most common weight-based dose for those that use a weight-based dose was 0.5 to 1 grams per kilogram per day, again in the adult population. When we look at the pediatric and infant population, the primary method was using a weight-based and 84% those seeing the pediatric patients and 93% of those seeing the infant population. Uh, the most common weight-based dose in the peds was 0.5 to 1 grams per kilogram per day in the infant population higher at 2.6 to 3 grams per kilogram per day, certainly within guidelines. When asked about uh, the provision of ILE in patients that are critically ill, and in terms of the different populations you use here, you can see that 53% uh, responded that they did um, provide ILE to the adult patient, and with 24% responding they did not provide the adult population, the ILE in the first seven days. Again, much higher in the pediatric patient population when we looked at provision of ILE in seven days at 83% and then the infants at 96% of those clinicians provided ILEs in the first seven days. When asked about provision of ILE in a patient that's not critically ill in the first seven days, much higher here in terms of the adult population. So 81% said they did provide ILE in the first seven days. Uh, in the pediatric population, 88% said they did uh, provide the ILE in the first seven days. And over 90% of those that see infants provide the ILE in the first seven days. So why do we ask this question? We can go back and look at in the publication in 2017 in the journal Parental Enteral Nutrition, or JPEN, saw the publication um, of guidelines for provision and assessment of nutrition support therapy in the adult critically ill patient. Um, this particular guideline was developed by the Society of Critical Care Medicine and Aspen, and again, published in 2016. And this guideline uh, uses grade evidence, looking at what evidence is available, looking at evidence-based medicine. And so throughout here, you'll see a question and a recommendation and that recommendation being graded. So the first question uh, addressed the use of ILE in the first seven days in a critically ill patient. And the question is, should soy-based IV fat emulsions be provided in the first week of an ICU stay? So the re recommendation by the SECM Aspen um, paper is that they suggested withholding or limiting soybean oil-based IVFEs. Again, IVFE at the time was the designation for fatty emulsions during that first week. And a patient who's critically ill where you're concerned about that patient possibly developing essential fatty acid deficiency, it was recommended that you provide a maximum of 100 grams per week and you could divide that into two doses per week. Now, the concern here is the soybean oil-based IV fat emulsions, or ILEs, do contain omega-6 fatty acids, which have been found to be immunocompromising. So one of the concerns about using these in a critically ill patient is that they can be and have been shown to be immunocompromising. Now, I will note here that the quality of evidence is very low here. So when you look at the number of publications and the quality of evidence is, is very low in terms of withholding or limiting a soybean oil-based IVFE or ILE. The second question is, is there an advantage to using alternative IVFEs or ILEs that contain medium chain triglycerides, olive oil, fish oil, so in other words, a mixture of oils over the traditional soybean oil-based lipid emulsion in a critically ill patient. 
So remember when this paper was published in 2016, we did not have any alternative IVFEs or ILEs in the United States. And so at that point, they could not make a recommendation due to the lack of availability of these products in the US. But note here, there is a statement when alternative IV fatty emulsions, so those that contain soybean oil, MCT, olive oil, and fish, so a, a mixture of oil emulsions, when they do become available in the US, again, based on expert opinion, we suggest that they be used or be considered for use in a critically ill patient who's an appropriate candidate. Now, remember at this time in 2016, we did not have alternative IV fatty emulsions. We currently have SMOF lipid available in the United States, which is a soybean oil, MCT, olive oil, fish oil, for oil-based emulsion. So in terms of discussion and best practice here, we do know that ILEs are an essential component of parental nutrition. They certainly prevent the development of essential fatty acid deficiency and also allow us to, to give calories via fats to reduce the carbohydrate load from dextrose so that we have less hyperglycemia that can occur in patients. So there's certainly a very uh, important component of that and allow us to provide additional calories with also allowing us to reduce the carbohydrate load. Also in terms of best practices, the use of daily ILE dosing uh, should be considered unless it's contraindicated. And when the alternative ILEs are available and they now are available in the United States, we can, should consider their use if they're indicated. And currently the alternative ILE available in the United States is uh, for the adult population only. That's the current uh, indication. We look at dosing recommendations. Again, Aspen's recommendation is amounts per day. So we dose ILEs as grams per day or amounts per day. We can use a 15 to 30% um, non-protein calorie uh, ratio in terms of amount of ILE to provide for the patient, but again, still ordering in grams per day. Uh, in the pediatric neonatal population, we need to order those as grams per kilogram per day. So some recommendation for soybean oil emulsions in an adult that's critically ill, uh, up to one gram per kilogram per day would be a recommendation. For a patient who is stable or for a home adult patient, uh, again, one gram per kilogram per day is the recommendation. And in pediatrics, using soybean oil emulsion, the dose is three grams per kilogram per day is the recommendation. We look at recommendations for the alternative ILEs. They're certainly prescribing information available. Again, they're, at this point, they're indicated only for the adult population in a range of one to two grams uh, per kilogram per day with a max of 2.5 grams per kilogram per day for alternative ILEs or for small lipid. So here are the references that and resources that I used throughout this uh, presentation, again, for your for use, use there and for your uh, 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 review. I want to thank you for joining us. Uh, for this four-part program it has been brought to you by the Aspen Parental Nutrition Safety Committee. And again, we want to thank uh, Persinius Cobby for the grant that helps support this program. I hope that you found this series helpful to you. And again, uh, thank you for your interest in parental nutrition and parental nutrition safety. Thank you.